have a deep question, not so philosophical. Uh, deep but not philosophical. I was, I was taking notes. <laughs> okay, wait takes actually, and I ran out of pen. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, by the way, member of uh, Ethics Committee of Libertarian Party of Russia, of the Federal Committee. Of it. So, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to argue about the takes. Uh, I just have one question. Have you actually re read I Am Red? Any book of her? If I read I Am Red? Yeah. Yes. It doesn't feel like you did, because one of the major takes of I Am is the class struggle between um, oppressor and nomenclature, which, well, she's an ex-Soviet person, right? So she perfectly knew what, what she's talking about, right? Yeah. So James Taggart versus David Taggart, right? It's not one country against another country. Surprisingly, for a person who is the president of the Andrew Institute, you yeah. take a lot of takes about how one country is better than another country. Like, there are like, what, uh, let me quote you, uh, basically three countries. Yeah, I believe some countries are better than other countries. I mean, uh, you don't have to quote me, I'll say that again. So, <laughs> so the yeah, iron bait is that almost any country as a statist uh, organization is bad against its own people. Like, let's say you talk about uh, free speech and political prisoners is what qualify it basically free, disqualify a basically frequent country into an authoritarian country. So what's your take on Julian Assange, for example? Well, Julian Assange is a criminal for, for a variety of reasons. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly why Julian Assange is a criminal. Uh, uh, Snowden is a hero, but Assange is a criminal. Um, so first of all, it's, it's pretty ridiculous to accuse me of not having read Ayn Rand when you clearly are completely ignorant of Ayn Rand's writings. Uh, she talks about differences between countries all the time. In all of her writings, in all of her essays, she talks about, uh, she, she even makes comments about Israel and, and the difference between Israel and other countries. And Israel at the time when she made these comments was a socialist country, and yet she viewed it as a superior country uh, to other countries. So, um, uh, you know, you can ask a question and you could disagree with me, but to start off by just, um, uh, making silly accusations and showing off your ignorance is, is ridiculous. Um, Julian Assange is a criminal because Julian Assange has no respect for human life. He is willing to publish anything, including stuff that would, would harm human life, that would destroy the capacity of free countries to protect themselves and defend themselves. Um, he was willing, uh, he was willing to, to publish um, trade secrets of corporations, anything that's secret he is willing to publish, including violation of property rights, which is trade secrets and, and corporate, corporate information, which is none of his business and, and is not in the public domain and the public has no, quote, right to know it. Um, he is not a defender of freedom and freedom of information or anything like that. He does not have a concept of freedom, he doesn't have the concept of individual rights or concept of property rights. But so he's, he, not, he's he, not a good guy. Did he commit violence? He's I not, mean, you're he, talking about why freedom is a concept of free of coercion. Did uh, Adrian Assange coerce somebody to obtain this information? Did yes, he, he stole. Stealing is coercion. He stole. He, 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 okay, other people stole it and he published it. So uh, the guy who buys stolen goods from the thief is not a criminal because because he, even though he knows it's stolen goods, he's not a criminal. Of course he's a criminal. So once you are facilitating crime. So Julian Assange was facilitating crime by publishing stolen material. So he's a criminal. Um, I don't think there's any question. Snowden, on the other hand, clearly identified areas in which the United States were violating the individual rights of its own citizens, made sure to take out of what he published that which could, uh, which could harm uh, agents and, and, and people, you know, people in, in foreign countries that, that might have been harmed by the release of the information, uh, tried to go through the channels to get things, uh, couldn't do that, so he released information. He's a hero. And I, and, 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 and I would... Like I said, he did steal. Yes, but he stole from those who do not have a right to keep it. So, which so is, in, your which opinion, is in your opinion, if there is a moral right, to, so if you say if you steal but for good, like Robin, Robin Hood would do, right? Uh, then no, Robin Hood's a criminal, right? Robin Hood's a criminal because he's... It's a morally justified crime. It's morally justified to steal from the government in order to reveal the government's criminality. So it's what? not, it's, Assange didn't do that. Assange would publish anything. And Assange would publish anything and, and it's not morally okay to steal from private businesses. But I don't want to, you know, so that's my opinion on Assange. You asked for it, you got it. I don't want to get into an argument about it. In terms of uh, differences, this is a problem with libertarians. 
The problem with libertarians, and you can see this in the new Mises caucus in the American Libertarian Party right now, the problem with libertarians is you cannot make distinguishing differences between countries. You, you, for you, for, for Maui Rothbard, North Vietnam was a better country than the United States, which is so evil and so disgusting. I mean, he used to celebrate every time an American pilot got shot down in, uh, during the Vietnam War. You can be anti-war without relishing the idea of Americans dying there. You can be anti-war without wanting the North Vietnamese to win. When North Vietnam took South Vietnam, when they united Vietnam under communism, libertarians in America celebrated. This is why I don't call myself a libertarian. This is why I don't want to be associated that much with libertarians, because I think that's disgusting. That if you can't see the difference between communism, between authoritarianism, where you can't speak, where you can't, between Putin's Russia and Japan and the United States, then you're blind. And you're, you're making yourself blind, because you're not blind. You're making yourself blind. And by making yourself blind, you're destroying yourself. And by doing this in the name of liberty and freedom, you're destroying the liberty and freedom movement. And that's why nobody will take you seriously. So, of course, there's a fundamental difference between if I say something and a policeman comes in and drags me off to prison, there's a big difference between that, between that plus all the other coercion, and where the coercion is limited to one sphere, let's say taxation or, or, or economics. It's still bad, it's still evil, but it's a different degree of evil. It's far less than a police state is. So yes, I, I value countries, I would rank them. There's an economic freedom index for a reason. So you can rank them in terms of how free they are, and you can still condemn them all. And countries are legitimate. Ayn Rand was not an anarchist. Ayn Rand did not believe in anarchy. She argued against anarchy. She called libertarians in the 1970s hippies of the right, which was not a compliment. Um, she advocated, she loved America. She loved America as a country. She loved America in spite of hating its politicians. And she thought it was an amazing country. And she, when she compared it to the Soviet Union, she thought the Soviet Union was fundamentally evil. And she thought America was fundamentally good, in spite of the fact that there was still coercion going on. So That's Ayn Rand. You're called Japanese, for example, Japan, basically, for a country, right? So after, right after Snowden, your favorite guy, uh, they passed uh, a law called Tokute Himitsu Hogo Ho, which basically prevents things like Snowden ever happening again in Japan. It's it doesn't prevent. Snowden violated the law. So passing a law against Snowden doesn't help. So the whole point of Snowden is he violated the law. Right? No, no, I mean, they, they, that's the thing. I mean, it's actually a science. So you can't have a law that prevents Snowden from happening. If you publish, if let's say you're Snowden and you leak information from Japan and you give it to me and I publish it, we both go to prison for treason forever. Right? Yeah, so, that's, so there is no freedom of speech in that sense at all. Or like, I'm not even talking about human rights things. Like, I don't know, like, let's say women can't have uh, their own last names, you know, after the marriage, or like they have to, uh, for example, stay divorced after a divorce for, for like almost a year. Uh, because, you know, God knows. So Japan could be freer. It's still much freer than yeah, Russia. That's, that's the point. It's, it's still, still much freer. Free. Yes, yes, Japan could be freer. Yes, of course. There are, there yeah. are more oppressive reg regimes than others. Well, that's, that makes that's, a difference. That's, that doesn't make you more taking moral stance saying like, oh, U.S. Uh, is all correct and Russia is all wrong. And nobody, nobody, nobody said, you will never hear me say, you, you didn't, you will never hear me say the U.S. is all correct. You didn't mention a single uh, example of U.S. You, your whole lecture was about how terrible uh, China and Russia is. Which is pretty, pretty much... Uh, China and Russia are terrible. Yeah, but like U.S. is as comparably terrible. I U.S. is not as comparably terrible. It's well, not nowhere near as comparable. So, so uh, you, you, Iran war and Iraq war was totally justified, same as Ukraine war, right? There's a, there's a massive difference between the one you offer. Massive difference between the one you offer and the one you offer. Let's talk about Israel. In West Bank, if you enter a relationship with a Palestinian lady, you have to notify the Israeli government and take a 27-month you know, You really shouldn't injury. talk about things you don't know anything about. Oh, yeah. You, you clearly do, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe 
press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.